<clears throat> important information needs to be relayed. I am wearing shorts, so I'm not naked. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Talks with Jen. Yay! This is episode 3 in my amazing, amazing series, Talks with Jen. I did film... Originally, I had a different plan for this episode. It was going to be about friendship breakups, but then I filmed it, and I didn't really love how it turned out. So, we're doing this we're doing this episode instead. We're talking K-pop again, which I'm so excited because I love K-pop, obviously, and I cannot shut up about it. So we're we're gonna talk about it. But before we get into that, let me show you guys my nails. I decided I want to do like a little what what nails is Jenny wearing for this episode. Because I feel like maybe some of you guys would be interested. But that's one side and here's the other side. Yeah. Anyways. Let's get into what you're really here for. My thoughts on K-pop. Part 2. Okay. So, uh, in the last episode, I talked a lot about my beginnings. So, I talked a lot about just in general getting into K-pop and stuff like that. This episode, I wanna, I have a lot uh, more topics I want to cover, so we're just going to get into it. The first topic I want to cover is survival shows. Specifically, I have two things I want to delve into for that. The first one is not necessarily survival shows itself, but kind of what stem from survival shows. And I just, I think the pattern that comes with survival shows the first thing is in general i've noticed and i feel like a lot of people who like watch k-pop idol survival shows and if you watched my last episode on k-pop you'll know my thoughts and feelings about shows like this but to recap i just in general i don't like to watch them just because you know to me i know i, I kind of get like i can't watch like all these young people get like judged and evaluated for their talent and i'm just like i don't i don't know to me it just i can't watch that and to see that raw like tv is hard for me to watch but in, anyways so, sorry i always rant um with survival shows they gather all of these super talented people and then when they do end up debuting to me at least they don't really get to use their strengths as well as like they could like some of these songs that come out where they're very good at rapping or they're very good dancers well i guess the dancing is a little less like i would include in this but like singing like the singers who have amazing vocals the people who are really good at rapping but then the song comes out they have their debut or comeback and it's just a little bit of a letdown because like they're so talented and their talent is just going to waste with this mediocre song um but that's my little tidbit on that part of survival shows my other side is just what 2023 has seen in terms of girl groups like girl survival shows so i have two i want to talk about the first one is run are you next run <laughs> sorry run next no are you next which okay so who watched are you next i didn't watch are you next i think we're well aware i didn't watch these two survival shows i'm gonna talk about but i did see clips on it on tiktok because i am on kpop tiktok um and there's just a common trend with seeing these like shows and just in general even when survival shows were a big were like a thing like everyone was all aware there is some you know favoritism there is some bit of rigging going on but it was heavily clear in are you next especially with some of the people who ended up debuting I'm not saying that none of the people who debuted don't deserve like the spot that they did like they still still do deserve to debut but 
like some other contestants were a lot more qualified let's say to debut than others <laughs> and like for example chanel she was like a very big um person in are you next and i mean obviously she had a huge international fan base and a lot of people liked her and she was talented at singing and dancing and just very versatile and to have her not really end up in the debut lineup was like very shocking to a lot of the fan um people watching um and then there's this other contestant who was deemed i don't remember her name but she was deemed too old to debut which i'm like i think she's like only 21 or something which huh huh what if she's talented she can sing she's beautiful like come on like let her debut and then a lot of people at least i saw on tiktok um and i don't know if it's the same on the korean side of it but um for K- korean netizens but over here international fans i've noticed on tiktok that a lot of people felt that um oh my god i cannot remember her name right now i think it starts with a w <laughs> oh my gosh i'm so sorry i cannot remember her name right now well her name insert here uh she was very much favored especially by lee hyun um one of the judges and a lot of people had things to say about him like my man only favored like the underage girlies and a lot of people are like he's weird and nasty and we don't like him and i still can't believe i'm still kind of in shock after i found out that he was the same person in the game creators the hive i don't know activity collab thing that they did i'm shocked that that's the same person but anyways yeah a lot of people came for him and just in general the judging panel for the most part they did not seem to actually judge fairly and well so in general are you next a lot of people felt very frustrated with the show and was like why do survival shows like this exist at this point because you're not even at least considering the favor of you know the fans because i'm pretty sure the the show in for the most part was heavily or supposed to be heavily dictated by the fan vote fan choice um but yeah and then the second one is dream academy i have a lot of thoughts about dream academy guys first of all first of all this was not even a survival show like this was not Like, okay, so Dream Academy is supposed to have many different trainees from different parts of the world, basically. And they're all eventually chosen down to the last, I don't remember what specifically the number was, but the last top something. And then they were to go on the survival show and basically, you know, have the go through competitions and the last six i think or nine um who made the top would debut as a global group so they're a global girl group they're not k-pop but they are a global girl group and now there's no problem with that if you're advertising them as a global group because that's what they are um what a lot of people had some problems with and what i felt a little disconnected with was the fact that it was so um just it felt so perfect in in the regard that it did feel like there was no you know connection between the fans like and the contestants themselves like we couldn't really see much of their personality and of course they did have some videos to show but it was very little and they only it's very specific to like what they released and what they showed and of course like these reality tv shows they still pick and choose you know they're the ones editing but for the most part like with produce 101 those kind of shows it's still very raw for the most part 
it still is raw like you see those moments and you see like with island too you see those like clips of them in their just natural way of i don't know being a person so like versus dream academy is very just robotic feeling it didn't feel like as a fan you couldn't necessarily connect with any of these people that's what a lot of people felt dissatisfied with and i felt you know that it didn't feel like i really knew who these people were and a lot of people had problems with the fact that it seemed like it was only solely based on the country a lot of some fans who were participating in voting only voted because of the country and like everyone's nationality and stuff like that so in general dream academy are you next these two shows were just not not the best um didn't have the best reception let's just say that okay so what else do we have um oh now i forgot to talk about this in the last episode but i really like the last k-pop episode but i really want to talk about this so i'm Guys, I'm about to rant. <laughs> I'm about to rant. So, okay. Everyone knows there are three big companies. Of course, we have Hybe as well. But I'm going to talk about the ones that have been kind of known in K-pop for a, like a hot minute. The three trio. And that is SMYG and JYP. Alright. I'm going to talk about my thoughts and opinions on each of these companies and really just delve into what i think each of them have the problem of now you guys can comment down below your thoughts and just you know if i missed anything if i don't have like all the information right because i am only you know talking with what i view as like as a stan like what i see and just things i've noticed that other people have talked about with these group uh not groups these entertainments so this is what i see these are what like i have for my opinions but like if you guys have any opinions as well that you'd like to share just feel free to comment them below just be nice about it <laughs> okay so first we're gonna talk oh we're first gonna talk about sm sm houses groups like nct red velvet um what other groups are there uh exo um and shiny and rise those are just some of the groups that are in sm so there's a clear picture oh espa treasure no treasure is yg espa um so they're very much like a futuristic entertainment their label is like the image that they create for their label is very um experimental uh and i feel like they've always been very experimental in general so with that in mind what i think is a lot of the problem with sm is how they manage their groups and especially the older groups like red velvet and exo and i don't know if you just been in k-pop you have probably come across just a lot of things but in general you know sm seems to have mm, an interesting past let's just say that especially with exo and their chinese members and all of that but all in all like they're just not the best i mean all three of these groups are not the best at managing any of their groups to be honest but with sm like maybe it's because some of these groups are getting you know i guess older and they're not as in the industry anymore but like that doesn't stop that doesn't stop the fact that they aren't promoted well enough or like they don't they're not given enough like their groups aren't given enough. for example like espa a lot of people felt like espa like they're besides rise before rise came in and i'll talk about rise before rise came in espa was not really getting a lot of like comebacks and music in the first place and as popular as they are like if you compare them to these other labels and these other groups they were just not getting as much music 
very YG feeling, you know, with Blackpink, which I have a lot to say with YG. But let's get into Rise and how they royally effed up with um, Sunghan. And right now, as of filming this, he is officially back. So, yay, yay! He is back. Um, not publicly yet, I don't believe, but they, uh, they, it is confirmed that he's coming back, which is very exciting. And it's just so far what we like a lot of us a lot of us were really i feel like in general we're, we're nervous that sm was gonna f up and like kick him out of the group because like what because i kind of expected like that these companies don't care about their members but it's just the fact that it had to take this long i mean you know obviously we're not in the company itself so we can't see the internal workings of how to assess the situation especially with what every side is thinking because of course like at the end of the day these are entertainments in south korea they are k-pop groups so like we do need to see what the netizens like korean netizens are like what is the environment like is it enough for like to bring him back will the public accept him like this and like what are the korean netizens thinking um because at, at the end of the day, they promote in Korea, right? So, we don't know all the workings of that. But it is like, it was concerning, because I was reading a lot of articles, that, you know, all he did was these, you know, teenager things, right? Very young things, and he's still very young. Um, and to, you know, get kicked out of for it and all these people to bring down his downfall it's just so sad it's just so sad um now my opinion on it the situation was if he was acting like this in this behavior then obviously it's not something that i love and i'm not gonna mm, not not support it but it's just not something that i love in the first place but meaning like more so on his attitude front how he treated his peers if he treated them like that if it is true then i don't love that is all that's to say but anyways so let's go on to yg with yg although blackpink had just all renewed their contract with black uh, with yg to continue as a group we already noticed like their downfall since they gave blackpink a comeback once a year like blackpink feels like that kind of group where they're definitely not a group anymore they're just not they're all doing very much their own solo things it just stopped feeling like a group i mean i feel like a lot of groups in general especially with their gen um their highs were very much 2018 2019 and then obviously the world pandemic and all that but i don't know i just you know you start to see that like path die a little and um i mean they obviously still have millions of fans they're black pink but anyways with yg they just suck balls oh my god so like i don't think there's gonna be an entertainment coming from my weave <laughs> hopefully not but this is all just i'm just a girl uh i'm just a girl and if there is any actual entertainment watching list like from smyg or jyp like i'm just a girl i'm just a cute little girl sitting in her room and i'm not gonna hurt like i'm not gonna bring anyone down I'm just, like please don't come for me please don't sue me um uh, sorry for trash talking your label and your entertainment uh, anyways, anyways, uh, YG can't manage the groups. One, two, suck at giving them comebacks. And three, don't give original music anymore. It's all the same formula. For example, Baby Monster just debuted and their song Batter Up. If you guys watched it and you are very well aware of what Blackpink's music is like and in general YG's music, it is exactly the same formula as Blackpink's music videos. Uncanny, guys. It's the same. Like, 
from the um the singing like how the song is sung the chorus and then they have like the break dance part exactly like how a blackpink music video is filmed i don't know guys i don't know all right all right let's roll into the last entertainment and that is chihuahua can okay but like first can we just talk about what the heck is mr park chin young chin young park chin young park doing jyp mr jyp himself doing at these award shows like did you guys see this clip on like tiktok like it's so crazy i'm not i like jumped out of my bed when i saw his outfit that purple monstrosity mr mr jyp please don't come for me please don't come for me don't sue me please um jyp <sighs> yes they also cannot manage their groups but but it's also the fact that they're debuting <laughs> so many groups and never managing one at a time um which i'm like what what is going on like right like you're debating all these groups but you can't even focus on your soul groups that make you popular in the first place first place like example itsy i'm so like so sad what's happening to itsy like guys like itsy poor itsy if you know you know anyways so let's see what else oh Pujong. so my king our leader from 80s i was not was i'm always on tiktok right the girlies are always on tiktok um and he, well, I, f- I found this very interesting there was a quote that he said where um that i felt like very much applied to how i feel about k-pop and how i think i will think about k-pop in the future which is essentially the quote was about how your love of k-pop will never disappear meaning i hope you look back one day and when you hear my name you'll remember how much like how happy you were like that is so freaking cute that is so freaking adorable and that's like exactly how i feel and i think i will continue to feel about k-pop oh okay yeah i know i have a lot of, oops, i have a lot uh, i have a lot of topics to cover in this episode but we're kind of almost done kind of a little bit anyways so i was actually i'm a weekend stan and we all know this and she basically came out with a, like a video on youtube because uh, she has a YouTube channel and I love her so much. She's so slay. But she was talking about how, you know, nowadays albums are very rare. Like albums are a rare thing. And I was like, that is so true. Like nowadays, all we get is two minute songs and just repackaged songs or singles and very frequent comebacks. Like every month will be a comeback from the same group. Like I has like so many comebacks i'm like whoa are we overworking these idols guys Hmm?" um or it's just like lesser music not as much music i don't know it's like weird it's like too much music meaning like a lot of comebacks but then like they're so short in terms of length and it's not like we don't get a full album it's just like the same repackaged songs from the last you know what I mean? So I was really excited when she came out with a full album. And I loved how she shared her sentiment that, like, there is very, like, it's a very rare thing to see albums full. It's a rare thing to see albums nowadays in K-pop with, like, full songs. And with her album coming out, I think it was just so great and refreshing to see that kind of thing. And I love that. Um, and in a, like youtube video she did with um bomi from a pink she talked about how you know comebacks you would spend you would have a comeback and these groups would spend a month promoting and nowadays when you see these groups it's like they have two weeks of promotion and then they're done 
like that's crazy because i do remember that time when they these groups had comebacks and they would have like a month of just promotion but now it's only like two weeks and then they're already on their next comeback wild um but yeah so i think this will be the last thing i'll talk about okay so sorry i have been rambling on talking so much i'm kind of running out of breath right now <laughs> okay so i want to talk about k-pop's change and i feel like i've been kind of talking about this in general with my like these two k-pop talks with jens and how clearly i'm stuck on 2017 k-pop because that music was so good the music was so bop i want to talk about though like the reason why i brought up trend trending music concept is because i think for me it definitely shows the the evolution of k-pop in 2017 and then k-pop now in 2023 um and just what is kind of more value now and what it shows about kind of what was popular what's trending and what in general like not society but in general what was i guess i guess um yeah i guess society views as important or valuable or something like that i don't know kind of hard to say in some words but generally so for example take this music video oh take this music video photo still for example i said example twice in one sentence i'm so sorry sometimes i mean at this point of the video i'm my my speech is slurred anyways so take this photo now this is a photo from a 2017 2018 music video right and then look at this photo from 2023 music video what's the difference guys well first of all back in 2017 2018 a lot of what music videos looked like were very much on heavier like blue lighting blue and red lighting It was a lot more focused on that professional, like, camera quality look. And, of course, camera quality's gotten even better now. But it's very artsy. Um, Brandon Wolfell, that kind of vibe. It was that. Like, a lot of, like, sets. A lot of set designs. Versus um, in music videos now, there are sets and stuff, but it's a lot more editorial, it's a lot more raw, going back to Y2K, versus in the styling in 2018, they had focused more on, you know, what was trending, obviously, at the time, which was, like, skinny jeans, that kind of stuff. Sorry, I keep hearing something over here. Anyways, so those were, like, obviously, the clothes that were popular, but you can just see the difference in the styling now is you know i mean in general um fashion repeats itself which is like you know trends come and go and uh, come back again so obviously right now what's popular is like y2k um and it's just crazy to see that difference between these two times of k-pop and how it also applies to the forms of content that come out now that are released now for example going 17 is a great great representation of just that change because back in 2017 a lot of the content then was very much you know these formal um variety shows where although they were trying their best to show the idols these things it was very it was just very standard these are the questions always get asked these are the things that always ha- play out and it was just very by the book by the rule versus now what content is out for idols like going 17 which going 17 started i think 2019 2017 a little bit in but th- their content also if you look at their old episodes changed as it you know as the years gone by what was more so kind of what people started being okay with for example a lot of idols now 
feel more raw, feel more connected, especially with TikTok, because one good, you know, person that I think um, does really good, um, what is it, example of this is Rise's um, Anton. My name is Anton. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, He comments on like a bunch of people's tiktoks that have you know the rise sound or address like rise whatever like things like that you know k-pop stands and it just like that alone him being in the comment section and a lot of people are like it just feels like he's a friend it feels like someone you know and of course it has to do with like a lot of these idols are now a lot more closer to the same age as like what the general um age demographic of is for k-pop stands they are like the same age now like gen z so and you know gen z humor all that stuff but it just feels so different compared to then where the closest thing to raw form was lives but it's just so different now because again like he's commenting on like our tiktoks and it just feels so much more connected um i don't know i just noticed that big change in k-pop in general and i just wanted to talk about it um i think that's all for the episode today guys so yeah i rambled a lot i talked a lot about k-pop and um i'm excited to talk in the next episode i think the next episode i'm probably gonna have a special guest on not that special so don't get too excited but (laughs) i'm really excited so um yeah see you guys on the next one bye bye